The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. You may remember Tyler from an earlier episode where we made a single-handed guitar. Well, now he's back with another project idea. What is it? Well, it's a little free library. Wait, what is a little free library? A little free library is a place where you can leave a book, take a book. Oh, I think I've seen those. Yeah, in people's front yards and they're free. What do they need our help for? Well, they were looking for a way to design a flat pack uh, with tongue and groove that can lock together with minimal uh, amount of materials. Oh, kind of like Ikea furniture. Like Ikea. And Hopefully then, not made of particle board though. Not particle board. Something that'll withstand the weather a little better. And then also looking to data log the traffic usage of the unit. Oh, okay, so we could put a circuit inside with an SD card to keep track of the time and date when it's being used. All right, so we need to make a data logging unit and then a little free library itself to put the data logging unit in. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here's my idea for data logging for the little free library. If we have an SD card, it can store not just the number of times it's been opened, but the time of day it's opened, and then we can also put these into a text file. We have tabs, therefore it could be imported as CSV or column separated values into a spreadsheet. And I think that would be a very good way of presenting the data. So what I've done here is I've attached an SD card to one of my AVR boards. Now SD cards always run at 3.3 volts, and this is a five volt AVR board. We could have possibly run the AVR at 3.3 volts, I believe it is in the operating range. But I elected instead to uh, use this non-inverting buffer to act as a voltage conversion circuit. So what I've done is I've taken the three lines that are output from the AVR, which is master, out, slave, in, clock, and chip select. They go through the buffer. The buffer is powered at 3.3 volts. So the output of the buffer will be at the same voltage level as the SD card. And the one line that returns from the SD card, which is slave out master in, that doesn't need to go through a converter because the AVR can take a 3.3 volt signal and still interpret it as a positive voltage. I've connected the SD card to the AVR's programming header. You program an AVR using the AVR Mark II programmer over the um, ISCP or in-circuit serial programmer. I guess that'd be ICSP. And that basically uses uh, SPI bus, uh, serial peripheral interface, or sometimes called serial peripheral interchange. And that bus has three lines basically, master out, slave in, master in, slave out, and clock. And the fourth line is chip select. So when chip select is asserted, that says, okay, I wanna talk to you. And then it uses the other three lines to actually do the communication. So we're using the same connections that we used when we programmed the chip. Yeah. And you know, we could have used a micro SD, but that's kind of hard to solder by hand. So I just hooked up a full size one. Also, we have a 3.3 volt regulator here that takes the five volts, knocks it down to 3.3 and sticks it into the card under the buffer. And then we have a little capacitor on that as well. And I should also add a capacitor on the five volt line over here to smooth out the voltage, especially if we're gonna use a battery. Here's what my circuit does. When you turn it on, the first thing it does is check for a file called set time on the SD card. If that file is there, it uses the characters in the file to set the real-time clock. That way we don't need a bunch of buttons, you know, like an alarm clock, to actually set the time on the device. You just do it with a file. And then once it sets the time, it erases that file so it won't do it again the next time it boots up. After it does that, it opens another file, which is called the log CSV file. Well, it opens it, then it appends it. And it writes the day, date, and time to that file, but not the number of seconds, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Once the unit turns on and it writes that part of the file, like this is what time the door was open, this is what time you know I was turned on, it starts counting the seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. And every time it counts a second, it writes that to a location on the RTC's RAM. The reason we use the RTC and not the EEPROM is because the EEPROM on a microcontroller usually only has about 100,000 write cycles. That sounds like a lot, but if you're doing it every second, you could actually probably destroy the EEPROM or cause it to be inoperable or fail in you know a week or so. 
And the RTC RAM, the real-time clock RAM, that will be preserved with the time via the battery. So we can write the RAM there as many times as we want. So it keeps on writing the RAM like I'm on one second, I'm on two seconds, I'm on three seconds. Then when the door closes and the power is off, the last second count will be in the RAM. Then when the door is opened again, it's powered back on. Uh, it will check for the time set file, but you know, we've already gone through that. So it will read the previous second on time from the RTC RAM. So here it writes, okay, Wednesday the 5th or whatever, and then it stops. Then when it gets turned back on, it finishes that entry with how many seconds it was on previously. Then it writes the next entry and everything loops again. All right, it took me a few more hours, but now I have finished the PCB version of my data logging circuit. Let's take a closer look at the components. This is the AVR board that I made a while back. It's basically a little development board with an external programming header to save money. It has a capacitor on, the power input for filtering, and crystal and uh, another resistor here. So what we do is we attach the SD card using the SPI line, the same line you use to flash the chips, but we need to do a level conversion because the S D card is 3.3 volts and this is 5 volts. So we go through this buffer, which converts the voltage. Otherwise, if we ran this at 5 volts, we might fry it. This regulator here, which is much larger than it needs to be, but I had it laying around, does the 5 volt to 3.3 volt conversion for the buffer. Right here, this little guy is a real-time clock, uh, DS1307. The battery here powers the real-time clock, so it keeps the time. The real-time clock is read by the microcontroller over the I2C bus. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We're using an RTC with this project, which stands for Real Time Clock, specifically the DS1307. It's an I2C device, which means we communicate with it using two lines of data, serial data and serial clock. And inside of the I2C device, there are several addresses from zero up to, well, actually there's like 64 addresses. The first seven are actually to control it, and then the remaining addresses are actually RAM, which we will also use in our project. And it's coded in something called BCD, which is binary coded decimal. That's where you take a byte and you actually kind of cut it in half. So, you know, four bytes can get you the numbers zero through 15, or in BCD, it's used for zero to nine. So if we want to get the seconds, which will be two digits, you know, zero, one, zero, two, 59, the first digit will be here and the second digit will be here. So one byte will contain both digits. So when we load that from memory, we actually have to split it up in order to get our data. But it's also kind of convenient because if we're reading a value off of the SD card, for instance, to set the time, we make a file that's called set time, a text file, and the date is written out on that. When you read that file off the SD card, you'll get like, let's say the date is uh, December. So one, two, 12. So you'll get one, then you just stick that there. Then you get two, you stick that there and then you have the right date in your RTC. So basically we load in this data and that's how we get the time. It's always important to check your data sheets. There was a gotcha that I found with this. When you first set it up, it actually uses the MSB, most significant bit, of the seconds counter as an oscillation starter. You actually have to put a zero there, otherwise it will not start counting the time. It'll just stay at whatever time you set. If there's a one there, basically it pauses. So when you write the seconds, you just make sure this is a zero. So our file is called log.csv for column separated values. Uh, it's basically a text file that you can easily import into a spreadsheet. And we are logging day of the week, the date, the time, and then the number of seconds it's on. These are just some examples. And then we add a carriage return line feed, which is 1310 in ASCII, I believe. So here's how it looks when you actually open the file. You'll have day, date, and time. And we, we put this header in the file as well. And you know all the columns are there. So you, you, know, you can add these up or do all your spreadsheet stuff. And what I've mentioned before with how it logs the seconds. So yeah, when you open the door, it logs this much. It just writes that to the file because it doesn't know how many seconds it's been open because you haven't closed the door yet. And then when you close the door, everything shuts down. Then when you open it back up again, it says, okay, 
I read the RAM and I know that it was on for 17 seconds the previous time. So it writes the 17 there, which completes that entry. Then it goes on to the next entry. So when you remove the card to check the log file, the uh, last entry won't have the seconds because the last entry tells you when you actually remove the card. But all the other second data should be accurate. Let's take a look at the data as it appears in a spreadsheet. Here is the CSV file. It loads right into a spreadsheet and all the columns are there and it's pretty easy to read. So, you know, if you wanted to look at your data, this could tell you, you know, what time of day people are using it the most. So maybe, hey, they're using it in the evening. Maybe I should add a light. They're using it in the morning. Maybe I should add a bagel cooker. You know, you could make all your decisions based off this data. And you could you basically you know, go on here. Boop, and then, oh, that's a total number of minutes of engagement that people were looking at it with the door open. So that number could give you an idea of what kind of battery life you need. Like, oh, you know, this thing is on that much during a week, therefore I can calculate my batteries will last two months. So yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to use a spreadsheet because it's a lot better to um, use the data. And uh, if I were to erase the CSV uh, log file off of the card, um, then the system would just create a new one. So it's pretty easy to use. And as long as your coin cell battery is good, you never have to, you only, really only have to set the RTC clock once. RTC clock, the real time clock clock. Great. <laughs> See, I, I should have put a, a DMD display on the RTC clock. Dot matrix display display on the clock clock. It's the Department of Redundancy Department. Now let's build the little free library itself. I'm going to design it using Adobe Illustrator. So the idea is it needs to be a flat pack, kind of like a bunch of pieces of wood that people can assemble on location, kind of like Ikea. So I'm gonna design it using kind of a tongue and groove method. For instance, if this is the front, these pieces have tabs in them and they will slot into the sides via those tabs. And I have to have a little bit more opening than just the tabs because the bit is round. And then down here, we're going to have an area where the four by four post, which is actually a three and a half by three and a half inch post, will slot in. I've drawn this from a front angle and a side angle. And then we also have some art, silhouettes of animals reading books, which apparently might be cute, I don't know. We'll put that on the side. So we will route this out using the CNC machine. So I installed the switch first because I won't be able to, you know, get at it from behind very easily once this whole thing is together. So when the door opens, the switch is released. And we wired this as normally closed, which means in this state it's actually closed or on. And when the door is closed, that's deactivated. So this switch will basically just power our circuit. Okay, so we have to put this together in a certain order. These tab into the base first. See, and then also we have to put in the rear of it. Then we have to do that first because then they will tab sideways into this. So if we put this into the side first, we can't get this tab into there and this tab into there. I mean, we could have used fewer tabs, but they will make it strong. So yeah, I have to start by putting these front struts into the base. By Milnor's hammer, I shall avenge whatever planet I live on. How do you know the geek? Wait, was it the planet Asgard or the kingdom of Asgard? I'm Thor. All right, you ready? Well, I don't get, why did Thor's brother decide to attack Earth in the Avengers? Just because I hate Earth? He'd never even been there. <gasps> Maybe he was jealous. It's really satisfying hitting things with hammers. It's like I'm some sort of new age progressive rock band. Yes, I'm fully aware new age and progressive rock are two completely separate genres. <sighs> Don't email me. This is the bottom piece, the uh, four by four post, which is actually 3.5 by 3.5, that will fit in here. And then this will fit snugly around it. Hopefully not too snugly. And then there's bolt holes to further secure it to the post. 
I'm gonna caulk the inside to keep water from getting in. I'm also gluing all the boards together, but they went together pretty tightly. Um, I don't think I really need that many screws, maybe just a few. Felix and I put shingles on the case and then we polyurethaned everything. We're probably going to line the inside of it with felt or some kind of foam, but probably won't do that in the episode. Then this is the project box we're going to use. We have some industrial Velcro on the back. We have our batteries powering everything, the battery powering the real-time clock, a master power switch, and then of course the secondary power switch. So when you're ready to go, you turn it on, and then this, then they'll be controlled by the door. See how when the door closes, it turns off? So yeah, let's put this inside, and then we will finish up by adding our decorative trim. Final step is to sand the door a little bit, put the hinges on, and then install it in the little free library. What? A little free library! Where'd this come from? Oh, that's right. We built it. Let's take a look inside. I heard a switch click. I bet it's logging my every move. Makers at work. Two Uline catalogs. This is a treasure trove. All right. Well, Little Free Library worked out pretty good. We came up with a custom design that could be flat packed and cut with a single sheet of plywood. Well, that's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be finishing, hopefully, the ZX Spectrum Portable Computer Mod. We'll see you then. Hey, Ben Heck Show fans. Beginning in September, the Ben Heck Show will no longer be available on the Revision 3 network. Be sure to change your dial to watch us on YouTube or over on the Element 14 community as we continue to bring you great weekly builds and bonus content. My t-shirt changed. This won't hurt, squirrel. Ow! 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 I shall destroy Earth! <laughs>